While digging through my workshop, I came across an old fluorescent light module out of a sign box. And I thought it'd be interesting taking, taking a look at it because although it's not quite vintage yet, it's going to be vintage soon because these things have been replaced completely with the strings of LED modules. So this one has a very simple metal chassis with the inductor on it, or chassis if you're American, with the inductor on it, the choke as we'd call it here. And it's got the fluorescent tube and the fluorescent tube itself has the starter built into the end. And if I turn this on now, you'll see that uh, it's the old fashioned circuitry, no electronics. Well, not much in the way of electronics. And when I plug this in, it will, it will sort of blink a few times before it starts. So it started quite quickly, but what actually happened in there, initially this little thing in the end, I'm gonna to to turn that light off now because it's far too bright. Initially what happened was this little starter in the end uh, provided a current path through heaters to actually heat them up before it struck. And I can take this off just to show the construction. It's very simple. This is the lamp with the starter built in and this is just a simple inductor. It's got live neutral and earth. The neutral goes uh, straight to the lamp. The live goes through the inductor, comes back out the inductor and goes to the other end of the lamp and the earth just goes onto the chasse. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out a bit because I'm going to bring in the notepad and draw this down. There will be no surprises to those who are veterans of the electrical industry. I'm just going to tame this down a wee tad. Watch me tame it down just way too much. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. So ultimately, you know, this is just a standard fluorescent fitting, but just combined into a small enclosure. So the tube itself looks like this. It's a continuous tube of glass. And inside that is a carrier gas, which is sometimes argon, sometimes krypton. And there's also, in the end, a little heating element. The heating element is coated in a thermionic coating. And what happens is that when you heat that up, it starts emitting electrons. And that basically lowers what they call the the cathode drop at the tube, and it makes it easier to light the tube. Uh, if you were driving this as a neon tube, it would be cold cathode. It would literally just have one electrode at each end and choose brute force to get it to start. This makes things much easier. It means you don't need a high voltage neon transformer. So the power supply for this, the uh, is say for instance here is the neutral, and here is the live, but via that inductor. And the inductor is just used to limit the current through it. Uh, the, some cheap out systems use a resistor, but the resistor is very wasteful because it dissipates all this heat. The uh, capacitors are not good for this because they, on, as, when the tube strikes in each half cycle, it causes a huge current pulse and quickly damages the tubes. The inductors are the ideal choice for this. And basically speaking, as the current's flowing uh, through, the inductor's pushing back against it. It's just an efficient way of limiting current fairly efficiently. Incidentally, if the this had been a power factor corrected fixture, there would have been a capacitor across like that, because that is a simple inductive circuit, relatively simple inductive circuit. However, th those are pain in the arse, they're just terrible. They're just like, capacitors and fluorescent fittings are not my favorite thing. So these two other electrodes, there's two connections, they come up to another little globe. That's that sooty looking one. They're very black and sooty. They always go like that. And inside that globe, and I'll just draw an exaggerated size, it's filled with a gas, like neon. They fine-tune the gas and the pressure to the voltage required, and tacked onto one of those electrodes is a little biometallic strip like that. And then this little foil thing, there's, it's not even marked with a value. I could measure that. I could measure that right now. One moment, please. It is measured. 3.5 nanofarad. It's purely for suppression because it's across the contacts in there, but will contribute to blackening those contacts. So let's say 3.5 nanofarad. This one down here would depend on the uh, rating of the fluorescent tube. I'm not really sure what it would be. It would just be in the sort of low microfarads, like one or two microfarads probably. But this is full of uh, neon gas. And initially when you power this circuit up, if the tube hasn't struck, the open circuit voltage across that is the full mains voltage, which is 240 volts. So you get, to, in the case of the UK, you get 240 volts across it, and that causes 
the gas to glow in this tube. And uh, that quickly heats the bimetallic strip up until it physically touches the other electrode. And when it does that, current flows directly through the inductor, through each of these little heater filaments at the end, through that shunted starter, through the other heating filament, and they start heating up. And because it's uh, shunted itself out, this unit will now cool down. And because it's cooling down, the biometallic strip will break apart again. And uh, when it does that, the depending where it does it in the sort of same wave, it causes a high voltage spike. And also, because these are heated slightly, they may be at a level that the voltage across them has dropped that it can actually ignite the tube. If it doesn't, the cycle starts again. It just keeps going tap, 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 tap until it lights. If you've got a bad tube that is not lighting, you may find the starter. That's when you'll see it just going flash, 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 flash flash and not lighting. The other thing you'll often see, particularly with tubes like this, is it just glowing orange at the end. If it's just basically glowing orange around the end here, uh, there's a good chance the starter has welded. And something you can actually do for that is just to basically get the base and ping it like that. Just give it a sharp tap. And that sometimes gets a bit more life out them, but at that point in time it's your warning that you're going to need a new tube. Um, and that's more or less it. Anything else worth seeing? I've got the thermionic emissive coating, got the neon in here. Oh, that's the other thing. Once it has struck, the voltage across this tube will typically drop to 90 volts. And at 90 volts, the gas is chosen to actually not uh, sustain conduction at that. But sometimes you might find tubes that actually do light up. And then the starter kicks in again, they go out again, then it lights up. Uh, that uh, is uh, because the voltage across the tube, the electrode uh, emissive coating is sort of basically sputtered off and that causes blackening at the end of the tubes and uh, when that happens the voltage across this is enough to actually make it kick back in again that starts it think, thinks the lamp's not struck but in reality it was and it just keeps flashing and pulsing it makes you think that maybe the leds are a good option but having said that you've all seen those signs that are just basically the led signs with the power supply that's failed and it's doing its flash, 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 flash. So which was worse? But there we go. These had a very long life. The tubes, they, I mean, they lasted a, an extremely long time, probably more than many of the LED replacements. But now that the European red tape manufacturers are basically, well, this year, I think is the last year, they're allowed to manufacture fluorescent tubes in Europe. Uh, not sure how that's going to go with the germicidal ones. But there we have it. Um... There will be no choice but to go for LED and at some point this tube here is going to become a vintage artifact along with all its circuitry. Uh, strange how times have changed and what was radically new at the time is just now out of date.